welcome. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Today we are going to be continuing on in our conversation about commitment. But one thing I want you to commit to is having your Bible. So whether it's the book or whether it's on your phone, grab it now because we want to make sure that we are being authentic. And when we talk about reading God's Word, we're opening the Bible and we are reading it. As we continue today, as we gather from this side of the screen to that side of the screen, we just want you to know that you are loved, that we are committed to loving everybody. And so no matter where you walk, no matter where you are in life, we want you to know that you are loved. And today we are inviting the Holy Spirit to come into the space. We are inviting the Holy Spirit to come into your space. So lean in. I know it's hard, but lean in and see what God might say to you today. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the many opportunities that we have to worship and to thank you. And this is one of those moments. We thank you for this day. We know it is a gift. And we thank you for the opportunity, even on film, even on a screen, to convey your message, to convey your love in, in the way that you want us to. So I invite the Holy Spirit to fill us right now as we record this, but also to fill the other side of the camera. Fill it with love and fill it with a sense of what you're going to do through your word today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and welcome. I'm Dale Frichtenick, your worship host this morning. I'd like to invite you to join in singing the great hymn, Come Christians, Join to Sing. You'll find the words on the screen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today we're going to talk about birthdays. We're going to start by talking about birthday parties. I love birthday parties, especially the fun decorations, the happy birthday sign. What I really love is I wear a birthday crown. How about you? Oh, the party favors are fun. The cake is great, but I was going to bring it, but Pastor Tim ate it. But how about the gifts? Birthday parties are so fun, but what really happens on your birthday? You turn one more year older. Wow, does age really matter? Well, you can't drive until you're 16. You can't vote until you're 18. And you can't get Medicare until you're 65. So I guess age kind of matters. In the book of Genesis, there's a story about a man that you've probably heard of. Heard of. His name is Abraham. When I say Abraham, does a song come to mind for any of you? 
If you know it, sing it with me. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. Whoa, back up the bus. That is not where that story started. Do you know how old Abraham was when God came to him and said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations? He was 99 years old. Did you get that? 99. I did not say 29. I bet Abraham thought, wow, wish he would have came to me when I was 29. God, because I would have been much younger. So I bet Abraham was thinking, age kind of does matter. If you asked this body in her 50s to do a cartwheel, it is not going to be perfect like Hannah's cartwheels are. My cartwheel is going to probably hurt the next morning. So there are times where age does matter, but I want to tell you when age doesn't matter. And that is the fact that God can use you at every age, no matter how young you are or how old you are. When we are faithful, like Abraham was to God, then he is going to use us because God always keeps his promises. And God has promised us eternal life. But until we get there, he is going to use us each and every day. So if you're going to have a birthday this year, oh, that's right. Everybody's going to have a birthday this year. I want you to remember that even though you are turning older, whether you're doing a cartwheel or pushing a walker, God has a job for you. Be faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the story of Abraham reminding us that God uses real people, young and old, and that God is never done with us. Lord, help us to remember that on the days that we're tired or we have aches and pains or we just have too much schoolwork to do. Lord, you're using us. May we remain faithful just like Abraham and trust that you have the perfect plan for our life and you will use us each and every day. You are an awesome God and we thank you for Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. That was a good reminder, good reminder that no matter what your age, God can use you. I know for me, in my own journey with God, it has been those moments of reminding me that God is using me. It's not about what I always want, but the way that God can use me. I know that as Gina and I process moving to seminary, to moving our three kids, three, six, and nine, 2,400 miles across this country uh, to go to seminary, there was a lot of things to consider. But one of the things I hadn't even considered didn't even happen till the first day of school. My very first class, as I showed up, found my desk, got in position, and unloaded my backpack, and I was ready to take notes. I was excited. I was at seminary now, and I was going to learn. And as, I, as the class filled up, one of the interesting things that, as I looked around, I just felt so old, so old. But you have to remember. Uh, I was about 38, but to me, in that day, with kids 3, 6, and 9, I felt mighty young. I felt like there was nothing that could stop me. But you also got to remember that the seminary was located right across the street from the college. So all the young college people come right across the street that were going to go on to seminary. And it had me thinking at times, God, why didn't you call me earlier? Why didn't you send me to seminary right out of college? But then there's always those reminders. I may never met Gina. I may have never even found uh, where God wanted to work in both of our lives. And so it's sometimes hard. And sometimes you look and say, man, I'm feeling just too old for this. Or I'm just feeling too young for this. And it is a good reminder that age does not matter. And that's what we're looking at today. Remember, we are in, uh, we are in this month of February and we are looking at commitment. Commitment matters. We talked about the first Sunday, we talked about being disciplined with commitment, whether it's reading your scriptures, 
whether it's praying, it's being disciplined enough to set that time aside and make it matter. And then we went on to talk about how our heart, committing to what our heart desires can often get us into trouble, but committing to what God desires of our heart keeps us on track, keeps us committed to what God is doing in our life. And then last week we talked about there are all those events that we can commit to that help shape us and mold us, like going to seminary, but there are also those events that happen in our lives that we have no control over, and we can't be absorbed into the things that we can't control. We could still control, we can still commit in those moments that God loves us and that we are tracing, tracking after God. So today it's about age. Age doesn't matter. So we've got a good story. We've got a story from Genesis. So let us listen now to that story in Genesis. Today's scripture is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and I will be reading from the NIV. Hear the word of the Lord. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That is a powerful story. I love this story because it's a good reminder that age does not matter. Did you pick that up right at the beginning? Abram was how old? 99 years old and the Lord comes to him and desires to make a covenant with him at 99 years old. And there's a, there are two imperatives that just jump out at us right away. Two things that are required for this covenant, two things that are required of God, and they apply to our own lives today. That one is walk before me. Walking before the Lord. That is challenging on so many different levels because there's times when I think, well, I'm just going to hide this from God and I'm I surely don't want God to see this part or that part of my life. When God is asking us to walk before him in that humility and that humbleness and allowing God to see the full view of our lives. Oh, that's right. He always has the full view of our lives. It's not like I can hide anything from him. So this idea of walking before the Lord, that's an imperative. That is something you must do. You must do each and every day. And then it says, be blameless. Now, I don't know, when I saw that word, be blameless, first thing, it kind of made me nervous. How blameless do I have to be? And as I unpacked that word, as I looked at the, the content of what's in that word, it is not being spotless without blame. It is not being perfect like Jesus. It is actually having the sense of loyalty or having a sense of faithfulness. So in everything you do, are you loyal to God? In everything you do, are you faithful to God? Are you a faithful follower? So that is what God has come to Abraham to speak into his life. I want to have this covenant with you. 99 years old, I want to have a covenant with you. But I need you to walk before me. And I need you to be blameless. And we see this action that takes place after those words are said, right? We hear, we read that Abraham falls to his face. When a person falls to their face, that is acknowledging, yes, I understand what you said, and I will do what you said. Wow, that's a big moment right there. This is a 99-year-old Abram, and he has fallen to his face to accept this covenant that God wants to make with him. So what is the covenant? How do we unpack the covenant? The covenant is that he is going to be, uh, he is going to multiply. He is going to become 
the father of many nations. And he is going to have kings in his downline, so to say, in his lineage. And that's huge because pay close attention. I don't know about you, but when I think of a covenant with God, I want to see the results. I want to know that the things I'm doing right now are making a difference and they're making changes. And that's not the covenant that's being promised here at all, is it? You see, actually, Abraham may very well pass away, and we know the fact that he will, and not see any of this come to completion, this covenant. Will he see all these nations? Will he see all these people? Will he see you and me? No. This covenant was made for you and me. It was made for us because the fact is, by accepting Jesus into our life, we are now grafted into that covenant. We are grafted into that lineage of Abram. That is way cool. That is something that for us today should give us pause to think, to contemplate. That was what was promised so long ago is still being carried out generation after generation. It's important. It's really important that you build that into your life, an understanding of that, so as you share it with other people, you can explain to them that same thing. It's important. And as we go further, we see that uh, as Abram and Sarai go through this process, there's a humbling. There is obviously a humbling. But what they do is they get a name change. I think a name change is something that we can't quite wrap our minds around because although our parents gave us a name at birth, and there are those people that make changes, like when a person gets married, the female usually changes her name or adds a hyphen to her name. So there are some of those kind of name changes. And there are times when people actually, we know several celebrities, right, that go and change their name. So name changes, while they're not regular things, this is one of those that is a very big deal because they are getting a new name change here. Abram becomes Abraham. Sarai becomes Sarah. Why is that significant? Because it's a marker in the sand of a new beginning. Now notice, it doesn't say that they're going to take on new personalities and that the very essence of who God made them to be is going to change. It's a name change. It says, okay, at this point, from this point on, your name has changed, and you have a place of new beginning. I think that's important for us because I know even as I walk this life with Christ and understanding what Christ wants to do, I often look back at where those changes were. I had a great conversation with a gentleman the other day, and he talks about how graceful, how great God has been and how kind God has been in his life and this amount of grace that has been poured into his life. He can stand now here in this point in his old age and look back at even in his 20s and say, this is where God worked. This is where God changed me. And this I can see now was God's plan. Isn't that interesting? Because sometimes we live in a culture where we are told, make your own plan, make your own way, rather than encouraging people to say, ask God what God wants to do with you and make God's plan the best plan and then stick with it. This gets right into everything that John Wesley was about. John Wesley was about the holiness movement. In his pursuit of understanding faith, he understood there was a personal holiness that was incredibly important. It's that Abraham and God covenant moment that they are working together on this covenant, but that your personal holiness also works out into social holiness. This is going to be carried on from generation to generation. And so it's important that we grab a hold of that, that this was meant for us, that this is something that we can grab a hold of because we see God at work from generation to generation. And we've got to know that as God looks forward, what God sees is not what we always see. And how God can use you we don't always, see, God can see, but we can't always see. So it's important that as we begin to look at our lives, as we begin to move forward and outward, knowing that we should be working on our prayer life, we should be reading scripture, we should be working on our devotional life. And if you are not connected with us through the devotions for this Lent season, 
make sure you can get that on our app. You can check out, get a hold of the office and make contact there. But we would love to get that devotion in your hands. It's important that you have that time of devotional. And that's the personal holiness that you're working on. That's what John Wesley really wanted us doing. But John Wesley was about small groups and about community as well, understanding that social holiness played a huge role in developing people, the individual, the small group, congregations, and not least of which, communities. Communities with that strong sense of understanding who they are as a community and the importance of being a community. This covenant, it is an everlasting covenant. It was not meant to, to just be in Abraham's generation. God promised this as an everlasting covenant. And when we get down there to verse 7, it talks about the everlasting covenant from generation to generation. From offspring to offspring. And so we need to pay close attention. Age does not matter, but commitment does matter. And that's what we have talked about all month, commitment. Are you committed? Your age should not matter. At 38, I was feeling like the youngest person, or the oldest person in the youngest group of seminary people. In the midst of that, I discovered age does not matter. And guess what? I actually found some people in their 60s that were at seminary and got to talk and understand how they felt in their 60s going back to seminary. So age does not matter, but the commitment in your life does matter. As we think about what God is doing in our lives, as we think about the things that we committed to in February, know that we are moving to Easter. Are you committed to that Easter morning of being in the presence and acknowledging Jesus is your Lord and Savior. That's a big commitment. That's a commitment that we have to renew every year. It should be something that we're excited about, remembering God's story. So as we take just a minute here and listen to a song, I want you to reflect on that. I want you to reflect on the power of commitment, the power of Abraham falling on his face in front of the Lord and acknowledging God's story was the story he was going with. He wasn't staying put with what he wanted, his comfort zone, but he was going forward in God's story. What are you committing to? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to, to be in relationship with you. That commitment that you have, the covenant that you have provided for us is everything. And in Jesus, we see so much of what you desire in our lives, so much of how you want us to walk fully trusting you, being faithful, knowing that we are not perfect people, but that we can actually be blameless people. We can be those people that are committed to, to walking before you and to walking even when we fall, even when we stumble, acknowledging you as our God and forgiveness. Lord, there may be some people right now that are listening to this and they just don't think they qualify. Lord, I pray that you would touch them right now, that you would allow them to feel your presence. And it's in your name that I pray forgiveness for them. It's in the name of Jesus that we receive forgiveness. And Lord, as we continue on, I just pray that everything that we say and everything we do, we know it does matter and that we would be committed to the things that matter for you and for the kingdom of God. Lord, be with us. Allow this song to move us, to help form us and to help shape us, but help remind us of your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Now please stand up and stretch your legs and join me in singing, It Is Well With My Soul.
Age does not matter. Commitment is what matters. And personal holiness is a beginning, is a starting point for that commitment. No matter what you're committing to, I know you commit to a lot of things, whether it's for your kids, whether it's for work, whether it's for school, whatever you're committing to, remember that at the heart of what you're committing to is that God would use you and that God's story, God's plan, whether it's taking you off to seminary or whatever it might be, that in the midst of it, you're acknowledging that you're going to go before the Lord, you're going to trust God's plan, you're going to have faith in God's plan, and that whatever that plan reveals will be opportunities for you to grow. That's the personal holiness. Because at some point in your life, that personal holiness needs to replicate itself to the community around you. It needs to build into the community around you. Your story matters. Your story shared with others finds its way into people that are doing or struggling in the same areas. It's amazing to me how I see that play out. So know that here at Centenary, what we are trying to do is build personal holiness first and foremost. We need people who have a strong personal holiness so that as they are growing, they are sharing that then into social holiness. And that's what we desire, is that our church family and then our community we become stronger and stronger because of that desire to have foundation at our everything we do of God. And so may God's word speak to you this week. May, God's, may the time you spend in God's prayer be with you. And we are so thankful that you are helping us to build the community. Building the community not only takes a lot of prayer, but it does take finances. And we have a few projects that are going on, and we are so thankful for people that are stepping up and helping us to take on those projects. And so we would invite you that whether you're given on the app or whether you're coming on Sunday and giving, depositing the check or whether you're mailing that check in, we want you to know that we are thankful that you have partnered with us because that's what this is. It's a partnership. And your partnership in giving matters. It matters. Just like we've been talking about the things that matter. Giving matters. And so as you work that out with God and what God wants to do with you, know that he is doing mighty things at Centenary and he is using us in mighty ways. And so we look forward that even as COVID is still with us, we are going to continue to reach out and find creative ways to be a part of you and a part of our community. And so go forth this week in the power and knowing that commitment matters and God's story matters in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.